Do you know how many colors you can make with just red, yellow, and blue on your palette? There's actually no answer for this question, but let's talk about why it's important to think about that. Hi, my name is Michino Hisabayashi, and I'm a student here at Clark University. Today, I want to share two lessons that I learned from my second grade art teacher, and how those lessons bring me back to a positive mindset that I find very useful. So this past August, I had the opportunity to take a recognized personality test called Strength Quest, which assesses a person's top five strengths. My top quality was positivity. So now, all of us are made up with different and unique experiences, and everyone has a different palette. We have stories that only we can tell, and a canvas that only we can paint. So when I started to think about where this positivity that I have on my palette may have come from, my mind clicked with the memories of Miss Yoshinaga. Miss Yoshinaga was my second grade teacher in the Japanese elementary school in Bangkok, Thailand. She was one of those really genuine and passionate teachers who believed in the power of education and every kid's creativity. She was, she was scary at times, perhaps a little strict for second grade class. But we all loved her at the end of the day, and she taught us the importance of honesty and the value of failures. What I remember the most are her two rather interesting rules that she had during art classes. Her first rule was that we could only paint with the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, not even white or black. So all the other kids in other classes could use all of the paint that came with the paint set, like pink, purple, even silver and gold. But our class had three colors. Um, when she first told us of, of this rule, we were about to paint animals that we saw at the zoo. I was going to paint bears. And as you may know, not many animals are just red or completely yellow or totally blue. So we looked at her with our mouth open because we didn't know what to do. We never thought that we had to make the colors that we didn't have. What ended up happening, though, was pretty impressive. A group of seven-year-olds, seven, eight-year-olds, seven, eight who were still learning to solve the multiplication table, now knew how to blend the primary colors to make a whole spectrum of colors on the color wheel, even brown. So from this first rule, I learned that if I can stop complaining about, about what I don't have and start experimenting different methods to reach the goal that, with the resources that I do have, possibilities are pretty limitless. Second rule. Her second rule was that she refused to answer certain questions that we asked her. We would do our paintings, bring it, bring it up to her, and ask, Miss Yoshinaga, what do you think? Is this OK? Am I done? And whenever we did that, she would point out to us what about the artwork that she liked specifically, but would always respond with, Michino, I can't answer that question for you because there is no right or wrong in art. I'm not here to tell you if you're done with your art or not. So I would go back and ponder, what else can I do? Or is this the best product that I can create at this moment? So from this second rule, I learned to embrace the learning process and persevere until I am proud of what I create. So what I want you to do today is to think about how these two lessons can be applied to your life. Let's think back and think back to when we were kids. We were willing to make mistakes, paint outside of the lines, and experiment. We were fearless, simple, and curious. Think back and ask, what is it about you that makes you, you? What is on your palette? Perhaps more often than we realize, I think that we stress over our weaknesses and limitations. We're conditioned to want more and more of what we don't have. We are so tempted to compare our palettes to other people's palettes. But let's remember that there is no right or wrong in art, right? So you are the only one who can decide who you strive to be, how do you feel about yourself, and most importantly, what mindset 
you want to be in. So for me, it's this mindset that Ms. Yoshinaga's art lessons taught me that I try and come back to whenever I feel upset or I feel inadequate. Just like there is no perfect in art, I remind myself that there is no perfect body, perfect face, perfect can candidate, perfect daughter, or perfect person. I remind myself that I should strive to be the best me that I can be, not the best me that anyone else thinks that I should be. So if you're wondering, um, um, I did learn how to paint bears with yellow, red, and blue just on my palette. And I have a proof for you. <laughs> I don't know why I look really upset, but <laughs> that's, that's me in second grade. So the next time you catch yourself worrying or stressing over what you're lacking, I dare you to try and shift your mindset. I dare you to have fun with the colors on your palette. Thank you. <laughs>